I am announcing my run for President of the United States. This isn't just a political campaign. This is a cultural movement to create a new American dream for the next generation. That is Vivek Ramaswamy throwing his hat into the ring for a contender for the 2024 presidential run. The biotech entrepreneur and Cincinnati, Ohio native, becoming the face of the, quote, anti-woke business movement. The 37-year-old surpassing the age of eligibility for the office by just a couple years and likely to be the youngest candidate running in a growing field of Republican hopefuls. That field currently including former President Donald Trump and former South Carolina Governor and U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley. 2024 presidential candidate and entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy joins us live. Good morning to you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming on and taking the time for the viewers this morning. How are you feeling? Doing well. How are you? Doing well as well. I, we appreciate you coming on. I know that there is a, uh, a lot going on for you right now. It's a very busy time. Uh, I wanted to get to the basics, if we can, for the viewers in terms of what would inspire you to run for this office. You know, as soon as you throw your name in that ring, the attacks start coming but it was worth it for you. Why? So, look, I just think we're in the middle of this national identity crisis where if you ask most people my age, really any age in this country, what does it even mean to be an American today? You just get that blank stare in response. And I think that's a problem. But I have a vision for what it actually does mean to be an American. Those are the ideals that set this nation into motion 250 years ago, from merit to free speech to self-governance over aristocracy basic ideas that I genuinely believe that most Americans, an overwhelming majority of Americans agree in. And I'm running for president to revive them, not just for us, but for the next generation too. You mentioned merit, and I wanted to play this clip if our viewers missed it. This was at CPAC. Um, let's play this and we'll get uh, your reaction from that. As U.S. President, I have pledged to get rid of affirmative action in this country once and for all. It is a national cancer on our soul, and we are done with it. It came into existence by an executive order from Lyndon Johnson. Every president since Lyndon Johnson could have crossed it out. I love the man. I'm going to come and talk to him about it in a second. But I'm going to tell you, cross that out. We're done with affirmative action in America. So if you can elaborate a little bit on that, too, but also some of the things that maybe you've said, including eliminating some federal agencies as well. Um, where do you stand with that? How does that make you stand out yep. from other other contenders? I think we are already leading this field with specific policy solutions. Executive Order 11246. It mandates that anybody who does business with the federal government, which includes over 20 percent of the U.S. workforce employed by those companies, has to adopt these race-based quotas. That is wrong. That created not only race-based affirmative action, but racism in every direction in this country. And I'm the only Republican candidate I believe that I'm aware of in history to expressly pledge to actually cross that out and end affirmative action in this country. And I've made other proposals from abandoning climate religion to using the military to decimate the cartel south of Mexico and solve the fentanyl problem to shutting down government agencies from the Department of Education to the FBI. Those are the two that we've listed so far. and There are going to be more to come. What I'm seeing right now is other Republicans are careful to dance around these issues, even other presidential candidates. I'm sure many of them agree with me on these issues, but they're afraid or, or reluctant for whatever reason to say them in public. I'm not. I have no such inhibition. These are my own convictions based on the vision I've developed for this country over the last three years. I mean, I've written three books over the last 18 months. I think that that actually gives me a deeper first personal sense because these aren't yeah. someone else's ideas that I'm channeling. These are the ideas I've developed myself. And I think that's what gives me the conviction to advance them, even though some of these are supposed to be touchy subjects that even Republican politicians wear kid gloves when they actually take on. And affirmative action is just a great example of that. These are big goals here, though, el el eliminating the FBI. Uh, how do you justify that? So, look, there's two categories of federal agencies. One category is federal agencies that should have never existed in the first place. That's like the Department of Education, where there's $80 billion spent on really worthless purposes, tilting the scales to four-year college education, a useless gender studies major that someone pays for in California, instead of two-year education, which many Americans could actually benefit from. Not to mention the fact that wokeism in the school comes from the Department of Education. So in those cases, I say shut it down, and it needs to stay shut down. Obviously, federal law enforcement is an important function, but in the case of the FBI, the problem is different. There's an administrative agency that has gotten so rotten in its corruption 
people are still walking into the, what's called the J. Edgar Hoover building in Washington, D.C. until today. The way you reform that isn't even just top down incrementally. The only way to actually get the job done is to shut it down and then replace it with something new and far more skeletal to fit to fill that role. But you build that from scratch. At a certain point, that's the only solution left. And for corrupt agencies that have gone so far off the rails, as I believe the FBI has in its politicization and its loss of public trust, that's, I think, what we need to do. And, and I'm unafraid to take these issues on. And I think that we're leading the way with specific policy solutions. And I think the voters are going to reward that next year. All right. I'm limited with time with you here. Um, I'm not going to play the next soundbite, but bottom line at CPAC, former President Donald Trump was there. He was laying out his plans. Um, if he comes back into office, things he would revoke. Uh, how do you beat a guy like former President Donald Trump? So, look, it is not is I'll tell you how not to do it. It's not by ignoring his base and trying to piece something else to the to, to the contrary. I think Trump's base is an important part of my base and vice versa. You know what, President Trump, even just this week, I saw a story come out a couple days ago or a day ago that said that he's now also calling for the abolition of the Department of Education after I have maybe said so dozens of times in the, in the you know, lead up to my candidacy and also during my candidacy. And that's a good thing for the country. I think I will always applaud someone saying the right thing. But I think the way that we, the way that we win this is by showing that we're really the ones taking the America first agenda to the next level. And as I often say, to put America first, we need to rediscover what America is that's guided by a set of principles that actually allow me to be unrestrained in actually pursuing the policies that even President Trump didn't. He could have canceled affirmative action by executive order. He didn't. He could have shut down the agencies that he now says he wants to shut down. He didn't. And I give him credit for everything he did. But now to take that to the next level, we need a new outsider. And I don't think that you get to be an outsider again. You get to be an outsider once. I respect what he did in 2015 and 2016. And that's my mold for what I expect to bring to the White House in January of 2025. I know we'll hear a lot more from you, Vivek Ramaswamy, joining us live. We appreciate the time, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.